ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वेलकम टू टूडेज रीडिंग फ्रॉम ब्रिलियंट एज द सन रीटेलिंग ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम थैंक टू सिक्स डिवाइन प्रोटेक्शन वी आर गोइंग टू बी रीडिंग फ्रॉम चैप्टर सेवन इंद्र ऑफेंस हिज गुरु मुकम करोति वाचालम पंगुम लंघे दे गिरि यद कृपा तम हम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारेणम परमानंद माधवम श्री चैतन्य ईश्वरम हरिओम तत्स वर्ष नंबर वन परीक्षित वॉज इनक्रेचुलस बृहस्पति रिजेक्टेड हिज ओन डिसाइपल वॉट इड इंद्र डू टू ऑफेंड हिम लिसन सेट शुकदेव आई शैल एक्सप्लेन वर्सेस टू टू एट बृहस्पति स्ट्रोड डाउन अमरावतीज वाइड वेल केप्ट एवेन्यूज trees bearing ripe fruits of red green and gold that ooze juice line their sides the exquisite fragrance of champak and parijat blossoms filled the air mantras in praise of vishnu emanated from ornate marble mansions topped with gleaming golden turrets beautiful celestials made their obeisances to vrishpati from all sides as he went by some hurried to a forward to touch the sage's feet and beg for his blessings others reverentially approached him with brightly colored flower garlands many called all glories to our beloved spiritual master brihaspati smiled and nodded pleased with their devotion when he approached indra's palace the guards lowered their eyes folded their palms and bowed low Welcome, Master Brihaspati. Raised a hand in blessing and entered Indra's immense audience room, unobstructed. Indra, seated on his throne, shone like the sun. Over his head was a white umbrella that glowed like the full moon. Sachi, his queen, sat by his side like a second goddess of fortune. Celestials of every class, such as the Maruts, Vasus, Rudras, Adityas, Sadhyas, and many others, surrounded them. ready to fulfill their every desire indra sat back on his throne tapping his fingers in time with the gandharva's rhythmic drum playing his eyes drinking in the beauty of the apsaras neat pose dance poses when brihaspati entered the audience hall the court usher announced his divine grace brihaspati has arrived everyone but indra rose the gandharva stopped their music and the apsara stopped their dance indra motioned with his hands hand that they should continue brihaspati frowned but then gave indra the benefit of the doubt maybe he had not heard him being announced he approached the bottom of the stairs leading to indra's throne and stood in view of the god indra glanced at him but then turned his attention back to the dancers verse 9 Brihaspati scowled the god's opulence had obviously gone to his head he was forgetting his dependence on the brahmins without brahminical power the administrators were nothing even indra brihaspati controlled his rising anger with a curse he could reduce the proud god to nothing but there was no need for that by the sage withdrawing his mercy indra would soon realize his mistake without saying a word brihaspati turned and left the assembly hall burst in when the dance finished indra rose from his throne and applauded the performers marvelous marvelous he took off two of his valuable necklaces and threw them to the chief gandharva and apsara then he turned to greet brihaspati not seeing him indra asked his minister where is our guru the minister said master he has left where did he go the minister lowered his gaze and said nothing Indra felt a panic rising in his chest he should have greeted the powerful sage as soon as he saw him he had surely offended him that was calamitous he jumped down from his throne and pushed pushing everyone aside rushed after brihaspati he raced past the palace guards and into the broad avenues as he ran he asked passing celestials have you seen brihaspati everyone shook their heads was 11 with an anguished cry indra slumped down on an ornate white bench his head in his hands what have i done he wailed proud of my opulence i lost my intelligence how could i have failed to respect my spiritual master meanwhile his ministers and courtiers caught up to him his chief minister tried to console him o king of the gods what reason is there for you to lament so 
we are all your subjects waiting to serve you. Verse 12, Indra looked up his face, a mask of despair. You are for all in the mode of goodness, yet despite being your king, supposedly the best among you, I have acted just like a demon. Alas, I condemn my wealth and opulence, for they have made me proud. Just see what a terrible mistake I made by failing to rise when my spiritual master arrived. The minister said, Lord, you are the king of the gods. Why should you rise for anyone? Verse 13, Indra frowned at, it, at his minister. You seem not to understand superior religious principles. It's true that a king need not show respect to everyone who enters his assembly. This, however, does not apply to his spiritual master, Brahmins or Vaishnavs. Such personalities are superior even to the king and we must always respect them. Verse 14, since I have put my faith in foolish counsellors like you, I am certainly... I am certain to sink into misfortune, just like a man in a stone boat will surely drown. Verse 15, meanwhile throngs of celestials and gath had gathered around, furious why the king had come unannounced into their midst, heedless of the surrounding commotion. Indra began pacing up and down. He kept muttering under his breath, what should I do? Stopping in his tracks, he announced, I will go immediately to my Gurudev's house and honestly admit my fault and with all sincerity beg for his forgiveness i shall humble myself before him by bowing down and touching his lotus feet since he is the best of brahmins and ornamented with the both knowledge and good qualities he will surely forgive me turning to his minister he said immediately summon my chariot i must hasten to Rispati's home and try to satisfy him verse 16 a little while later Rispati, who was meditating heard the rumbling of chariot wheels approaching his hermitage. He opened his eyes. Outside he heard Indra's voice. Pray tell me, where is my spiritual master? Brispati's students replied, Gurudev is in his hut. Brispati's lips twisted into a wry smile. Indra thought he could atone for his offense by merely apologizing. The arrogant fool needed to be taught a lesson. The sage exercised his mystic power and vanished just as Indra entered exclaiming, Gurudev, Gurudev, forgive me. Silence greeted him. He peered carefully around. Brispati was not there. He called out to the Brahmin students outside. I thought you said Gurudev was in here. The students began gathering round. The most senior said, yes, he has been in here all morning. You are mistaken, snapped Indra. Think again, where could he be? The student entered the hut. He examined Brispati's sitting place. It was compressed and still warm. Brispati must have just left. He turned to Indra and said, It seems he was here only a moment ago. Well, he is not here now. You must have seen him leave. The students shook their heads. No one had seen Brispati leaving, leave his hut. Indra began interrogating each of them. Someone must have seen him go out. Finally, the senior student intervened. My lord Indra, what is the use of this questioning? Do you not, not you realize our Gurudev's power is greater than even yours? If he wants to leave, he does not have to walk out of his hut. He can just disappear. I have seen him do it myself. Verse 17, Indra was stunned. Now he was in real trouble. He turned on his heels and hurried to his chariot. There the other gods stood waiting in their own chariots. Indra called out, summon all your soldiers. We must spread out and search the entire universe. Gurudev must have gone somewhere, set off immediately. The celestials searched each planet in the universe. Indra, along with all the chief gods, joined in after several weeks had passed. There was still no sign of Prispati and Indra and the gods returned to his palace. Indra looked gaunt as he paced up and down. Alas, he waited. He wailed, I have dissatisfied my spiritual master. Now I have no means of achieving good fortune. Each of the gods tried to reassure Indra, but nothing they said diminished his anxiety. Verse 18, meanwhile, in the nether regions, the, demon, the demon's wise 
inform the king of Indra's predicament. Immediately he hurried to Shukra's ashram, bowing low before him. He said, Master Indra has offended Vrishpati, he has abandoned the gods. Shukra's lips twisted into a tight smile. Without Vrishpati's protection, his disciples could easily overpower the gods and take over Amravati. He would enjoy living in the Nandanandana gardens. What are you waiting for? Take up your weapons and attack them. The king bowed and touched Shukra's feet. With your blessings, Gurudev. Verse 19, soon hordes of demon soldiers surrounded Amravati, their missiles and arrows hurled over the city walls. Striking the celestials remorselessly, the god mounted the ramparts and tried to repel their army. But the demon forces seemed invincible, their defences were impenetrable and their missiles, un missiles unfailingly hit their mark. Indra fought valiantly along with the weapons. With other gods, the demons' relentless shower of weapons struck them in their heads, thighs, arms and all over their torsos. Bloodied and exhausted, Indra called at retreat as the demon soldiers ran the city gates open. In return to the gods surrounding him, we must immediately flee to Lord Brahma's planet. Only he can save us now. With their enemies jeering and laughing behind them, the gods fled through the skies as fast as they could. Verse 20, Brahma sat with his eyes closed, his head moving rhythmically from side to side as he listened to Gandharva sing. Vedic mantras glorifying Vishnu, Goddess Saraswati entered his chamber and whispered in his ear, My dear king, Indra is here with the chief gods. They urgently need to see you. Brahma opened his eyes and sighed. Motioning to the Gandharvas to leave, he told Saraswati, show them in. Saraswati opened the door and motioned for the gods to enter. Slowly they limped in, holding each other and groaning in pain with each step. Brahma shook his head sadly, seeing their mangled bodies. Indra knelt before him and wept. O oh, most powerful king, kindly give us shelter. Verses 21 and 22. Brahma lifted a hand to silence Indra. There is no need to explain. I know everything that has happened. My dear gods, you were more powerful than the demons and conquered them in the past. On this occasion, however, they defeat you because of your offense. To your spiritual master, Brihaspati, I am astonished that you treated him so impudently. Surely you know he is the best of the Brahmins, Brahm Brahman realized and in full control of his senses. It is unfortunate that you became so arrogant because of your material opulence. Indra looked confused. Are you linking our defeat to the incident with our preceptor? Verse 23. Yes, this is a fact. Try to understand. Previously, the demons were weak. Why? Because they too had disrespected their guru, Acharya Shukra. That is why you could easily defeat them. They learned their lesson and have for a long time devotedly served their Guru. Now they are powerful. Indeed, if they tried, they could even seize my abode. Why you, the wind god said, maybe we can mollify them with gifts. If that does not work, we could come up with a plan to sow dissension between them. Verse 24, Brahma shook his head. You have nothing left to give as a gift. They have already taken everything, nor can you trick them, since they determinedly followed Shukra's infallible advice. Chandra moaned, it seems we are doomed to die at their hands. Brahma's voice softened, my dear gods. Krishna protects those who worship himself, Brahmins and cows with unwavering faith. The gods looked up at Brahma as he sat deep in thought. Verse 25, finally he said, O gods, hear my voice, immediately approach Pashta's son Vishwarup and accept him as your guru. He is a pure, powerful and austere Brahmin. And if you please him, he will fulfill your desires, provided you can tolerate his fondness for the demons. Verse 26, the gods looked at each other, visibly relieved. They bowed to Brahma and mounting their chariots, flew to Vishwarup's Remote hermitage, they found him collecting kusha grass. Indra called out, Sage Vishwarup. Vishwarup looked up, 
covering his eyes from the glare of the blinding sun, the gods leapt from their chariots and ran toward him. One by one they embraced the startled sage. Pray tell me who you are and what you wish of me, he said. Verse 27, Indra said, Beloved Vishwaru, may there be all good fortune for you. There are, we are the gods since we are your elders. To be respected as your parents, we come to your ashram hoping you will fulfill our desires. Verse 28, why you added, O Brahman, please remember the highest duty of a son is to serve his parents. This is true even when one has himself become a father. What to speak of a man who is a brahmachari? Vishwaru returned to his task of collecting kusha grass. I am an insignificant Brahmin. Indeed, my mother is from demon race. I do not think there is anything I can do for you. Verses 29 and 30, Indra persisted. Surely you know the moral codes. The spiritual master who teaches Vedic knowledge and gives one initiation is as good as the Vedas personified. The father is to be respected as Lord Brahma, your brother. One's brother is to be respected as I, Indra, the king of heaven. The mother is to be respected as planet earth. A sister is to be shown mercy. An invited guest personifies religious principles and an uninvited guest personifies the fire god Agni. All living entities represent the supreme lord Vishnu. Vishwarup sighed and stood up straight and his hands filled with grass. Forgive me your right. Please come to my ashram where I can offer you refreshments. And you can tell me how I can serve you. It is near to here. Soon the gods were seated around Vishwarup's sacrificial fire, drink, clear, drinking clear river water from clay pots and eating forest berries and roots from the banana leaf plates. Indra said this was most welcome. We had nothing to eat or drink for several days. How is that? asked Vishwarup. Verse 31, dear son, our enemies have defeated us and we have thus fallen into a most miserable situation we come to you as supplicants please relieve our distress by the strength of your austerities i have no armies how can i help you verse 32 indra fold his palms we wish you to be our spiritual master you are the self-realized soul a perfect brahmin of powerful austerities guided by you we will easily defeat our enemies and retrieve our kingdom Vishwarup looked aghast. I am your nephew. I would not be right. It would not be right for me to become your guru and receive your worship. Verse 33. All the gods simultaneously exclaimed, That is not a problem. Do not worry about that. Indra raised his hand to quieten the other gods. Then he turned to Vishwarup. Do not fear criticism for being younger than us. Such etiquette does not apply regarding Vedic mantras. Age determines seniority, but one may offer respects even to a younger person advancing in chanting Vedic mantras. Therefore, although you are our nephew, you may become our priest without hesitation. The other gods voiced their agreement. Verses 34 and 35, Vishwarup looked at their earnest faces. Since the gods sought his help, it behoved him to comply as he was advanced in austerities and thus able to assist them he smiled O gods by accepting the position of a priest i will diminish my brahminical powers accrued through my past austerities however since i am committed to always acting dutifully i cannot refuse you you are all exalted commanders of the universe and i am your disciple it is my duty to execute your order, since it is always beneficial to do one's duty, I accept your proposal. Chandra said, why do you say you will diminish your power by becoming a, our priest? Everyone requires wealth to maintain themselves and their families. Without it, how will you execute religious duties? Verses 36 and 37. Vishwaru bowed his head, O exalted governors of the planets, hear from me how the most advanced brahmins who abide by the principles of austerity and penance maintain themselves they do not take wealth from the disciples to support themselves or their families rather they discard collect the discarded grains from agricultural fields or the marketplace only low-minded brahmins accept the position of professional priests to enjoy an opulent life this is not my mentality however since you are all my superiors i cannot refuse your request Although my becoming a priest is something reproachable, I agree to do so. 
Indeed, I did dedicate my life and possessions to pleasing you. A cool breeze blew from the river, but the naked Shukadev seemed un impervious as he continued to address the king, who sat completely absorbed in his narration. Verse 38, Shukadev said, after making his prom this promise, Vishuruk immediately began a fire sacrifice to benefit the gods in their presence. He chanted the mantras with focused attention. Verse 39, when the sacrifice was complete, he told Indra the talent and tactics of Shukra protect the demon's opulence. However, by my power, I have composed a protective prayer known as the Narayan Kavach. By chanting this powerful mantra, we can take away the demon's opulence and give it to you. Verse 40, Vishwarup was always ready to do good to others. Therefore, he taught Indra the second mantra, which would enable him to conquer his powerful enemies. So this brings us to the end of chapter 7. Indra offends his guru. Thank you for joining. Hariyam Tatsat. Hare Krishna.